بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمدللہ رب العالمین وصل اللہ وسلم علی نبینا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد اللهم إني أعوذ بك أن أشرك بك وأنا أعلم أستغفرك لما لا أعلم We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for assistance in all that we do and may Allah correct us for all of our mistakes and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with ikhlas with the bat <coughs> that we have sincerity in whatever we do and that it's for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that we do it in accordance with the sunnah of the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us to give him his right. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a right over his servants. And this is a right over all of his creation. Allah has this right because he created you and I. He created us in our various nations and tribes so that we would get to know one another. Various colors. He allowed for us to take various paths, various creeds. That's from His mercy and it's a test for us as well. To see if we're going to do. To see which one of you is going to do the, the, the righteous deeds, the best deeds. That means having sincerity to Allah and following the sunnah of His Messenger alayhi salatu wasalam. So what's the haq of Allah? What's the right of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, ayu ala habba? We should all know this. We should, it should come off our tongues like nothing. But just in case we don't know, we have to remind each other. And that helps to put our whole life back on track, back in perspective. Listen to this hadith of Mu'adh radiallahu ta'ala anhu. An Mu'adh ibn Jabal radiallahu ta'ala anhu qad. Kuntu radif al-Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ala himar. فقال لي يا معاذ أتدري ما حق الله على عبادي وما حق العباد على الله قلت الله ورسوله أعلم قال حق الله على عبادي أن يعبدوه ولا يشركوا به شيئا ولا يشركوا به شيئا وحق العباء وحق وحق العباد على الله أن لا يعذب من لا يشرك به شيئا. قلت يا رسول الله أفلا أبشر الناس؟ قال لا تبشرهم فليتقلوا أخرجاه. This hadith is in in Bukhari and Muslim that the that Muawiyah bin Jabal رضي الله تعالى عنه was on a donkey with the Prophet عليه الصلاة والسلام. And this illustrates the حق of Allah. It illustrates for us also the humbleness of the Prophet And then <clears throat> the Prophet said, Ya Mu'adh, O Mu'adh, what's the right of Allah on his slaves? Meaning the rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on us, because we are his servants. And what's the right of the slave on a, over Allah? Mu'adh ibn Jabal radiallahu ta'ala responded by saying, Allah and his messenger know best. He said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the right of Allah over his slaves is that they worship him and him alone. And the right of the slave that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given them as a right, and they can't force enforce this right, the right of the slave over Allah is that he will not punish them if they have pure tawheed, if they do not worship anyone or anything besides Allah. They commit no shirk. Then Mu'adh radiallahu ta'ala said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, should I tell the people? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, don't tell them, because then they'll depend upon it. Meaning they'll stop doing righteous deeds and they'll just say, hey, I have tawheed, khalas. I believe in the oneness of Allah, and I'm, I'm worshiping Allah, but I'm, I'm just going to depend on that. Instead, they, then they would remove the fear of Allah and, and having taqwa and being continuous in their ibadah. So this is why, and they say that Mu'adh, in order that this knowledge would not be forgotten, that he only relayed this hadith at the end of his life, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, only for fear that the knowledge would be lost. 
at the piety of the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala. But more importantly, look at this hadith and how it illustrates the haq of Allah, the right of Allah. Allah is serious about shirk. Allah doesn't forgive shirk if you die upon it. So you have to know what tawheed is. You have to know what worshiping Allah really means. It does not mean that you can go and have a picture of your shaykh, have it on your cell phone, and cry out of humility before someone you don't even see. That you're, that's not even before you. Crying as you know a type of devotion that you worship them. You can't do that in Islam. Nor does the right of Allah, nor is it met by going to the graves and supplicating to the graves or saying that coming up with fabricated stories that some of those deviant sects do. They come up with fabricated stories and they write books about it saying that you should cry when you think of Saint so-and-so. You should bow your head when you think of Saint so-and-so. You should supplicate to Saint so-and-so. That's not Islam and that's not meeting the haqq of Allah. The right of Allah, and may Allah bless us to die upon that, is that you worship Him and Him alone, and you do not associate any partners with Him. So you're not meeting the haqq of Allah, ayyul habba, if you're supplicating to other than Allah, whether they're living or dead, thinking that the dead can help you, even if you're supplicating to the Prophet, O Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, please give me this. Please help my wife bear a child. Please give me a wife. Please increase my wealth. What? A'udhu Billah. That's all shirk. All of that will take you out of the fold of Islam. All of that violates the haqq of Allah. Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. He created us. He created all this beautiful beauty. This is beautiful out here. Well, Alhamdulillah, and this is nothing compared to his paradise. He created these signs. These are signs from Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fi kitabi al-kareem, Wa min ayati ya layla wa nahar, Wa shamsu wa al-qamr, La tasiru li shamsi wa la li qamr, Wa astiru li allahi aladhi khalaqa hunna in kuntum iyahu ta'budun. Look at that. That affirms that ayah. It affirms for us that we've got to worship Allah, not the trees. No matter how beautiful they are. They're green, they're beautiful. And they give off air and oxygen only because Allah created them to do so. That science behind all of this is from Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in that ayat, from his signs. Women ayati is the night and the day. And the sun. And the moon do not prostrate to the sun, nor to the moon, but prostrate to the to Allah who created them. If it is Him you truly worship, look at that. Allah says it right there in that ayah. That's beautiful. It doesn't need anything added to that. The explanation is clear. From his signs is the, lay in the, is, 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 is the night and the day. The sun and the moon. Do not prostrate to the sun. Why? Because the sun, because if you prostrate, that's a form of worship. Nor to the moon. Because they didn't create anything. They were created. Prostrate. Then Allah orders you. Prostrate to Allah. That created all of that. If it is him you truly worship. So if you want to meet the right of Allah, worship him and him alone, know what it means worship. Because some people would distort and say no we don't worship them we only call the we only supplicate to the dead and our ancestors and go to the graves of the saints and we go to the prophets because they're going to bring us closer to Allah because we have so many sins we can't establish that relationship with Allah A'udhu Billah that's kufr and that's shirk and that's what the Catholics say in essence they go to the priest Father I have sinned they don't say Allah they don't say oh Lord I've sinned, but instead they go and repent and go to the booth and the man is in the booth and he says, tell me about your sin, son. And he is supposedly the one to bring, get that forgiveness. Oh, Father, I've sinned. How? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts your repentance. Repent to Allah. Supplicate to Allah. Prostrate to Allah. 
Make your prayer to Allah. Fast for Allah. Make Hajj for Allah. Make Umrah for Allah. All of your worship is to Allah. And understand as this, and I'm going to end with this, Ayyuh al-Habba. Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah said a beautiful statement just to give us an idea about the concept of worship in Islam. And we got to know this. Qaida Adheen. قال الشيخ الإسلام العبادة كل ما يحبه الله ويرضاه من أفعال وأقوال الظاهر والباطن وكما قال الشيخ الإسلام رحمه الله تعالى May Allah bless him with Jannah to those He said عبادة or worship it is everything that Allah loves and is pleased with from those actions that you say outwardly and inwardly of the tongue and of the limbs and of course the heart. That's what ibadah is in Islam. Anything that Allah loves is considered an act of ibadah. So if you do something, if you smile at someone, that can be an act of ibadah if you do it for the sake of Allah. If you give someone something, just something small that they need, or you remove a harm out of the road, or you do whatever, you praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's name, whatever it is, those are acts of worship because those are things Allah loves. And may Allah love us. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyya Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.